escape into the world of anime with the Funimation app. Ah. Before you watch the video that, uh, Chris Ayers, the voice of Frieza, is currently recovering from a double lung transplant, and he, he set it up a GoFundMe to cover the expenses, which, it's not really looking good, guys. Like, he's lucky to be alive, but, you know, like, how this surgery, like, costs us just like so, so much money that i mean he was uh, lucky to have like the insurance to cover it but of course he'll be, still be racking up all these medical bills so please visit the Go, uh, gofundme page please help me share the vi uh, the link uh, either donate like a portion of my youtube revenue will go to it as soon as i get it please and may the power protect you chris also geared toward uh chris Zayman. thank uh, you that's the way uh, i prefer it as well uh what was the reason behind Using such an iconic voice such as Piccolo and Vegeta for All Might. Uh, well, uh, it's because it comes from the same vocal cords, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't. There wasn't a whole lot of thought as to whether it was going to use Piccolo or Vegeta's voice in All Might. All Might, I think, really comes from more of an Armstrong place. Yeah. To yeah. And then. And then the Zoro place as well. So. Thank All right. you. That's a great question. Yeah! The say button has spoken. He's the only living character to get away with it still for some reason. I don't know why. But my favorite line was Ben and Dragon Ball. He's like, Servant Woman, bring me a dragon claw at once! <laughs> I didn't get the stare at Monica in the eyes back then, so I did now. <laughs> Here's the theory, though. The, you know the clothes that Yamcha was, uh, like, you know, the, sorry, the clothes that Vegeta was wearing? Like, the, the yellow pants and the pink shirt? My theory is that that belonged to Yamcha, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the last person to stay at Bulma's house? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, if it is not Steven Alvarez. How you doing, dude? Sad. Hey, Savvy, we'll meet again for the last time. Where, where did we? Where did I see you last time? Uh, Sack Did Anime, like two years ago. Like you oh. signed my game right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Okay, this... is, is that the metallic box one? Is that the uh, no? It's one? just paper or whatever. <laughs> uh, that's no. still one of my favorite games, by the way. The the Buddha, like the uh, Tenkaichi two games mm -hmm. are great. I don't know. Like when I first was that was that wait? Was that Raging Blast two? Or no, Raging this is a Budokai two. two. Oh, that was the old Budokai two. That was a great game. Uh, I don't know. I just didn't like how the characters, you know, the way they move like chess pieces, and I'm like, what? What was I playing? Like, that was a that. Oh wait, Budokai two. Okay, yeah. I was thinking. Okay, there was Raging Blast two. I mm -hmm. man, Budokai two was so early in that. Mm -hmm. Budokai three was the one where they really kind of made it a lot more interesting. It mm, also yeah. came in that cool, like, limited edition box with the, the Dragon Ball in it. Do you remember that one? Uh, yeah, I think so. But if you look for it, like, Budokai 3 uh, limited edition box, and it has, mm. like, a Dragon Ball embedded in the big case for it. It's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. yeah. How you been, dude? Oh, very good, Chris. Anyway, I think I wanted to ask you, like, one of the most impactful things from Dragon Ball Z that changed my life was when v Vegeta, like, got his, uh, when he got defeated by Android 18. To me, that's, uh, like, you know, like, that women can kick butt, and especially someone like as toxic masculine as Vegeta was. It's like, how'd you first react to like uh, recording that moment for the show? Well, he uh, I actually kind of loved that moment for him because he's just such a he's just such a jerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, it was just nice to kind of see him get beat down by anybody. Although, you know, I didn't realize that that was going to continue for the rest of Vegeta's existence in the Dragon Ball series. That poor guy never gets a break like, like it's so funny Kira Toriyama just loves to mess with him mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. uh but that was a good that was a great moment for me I loved him getting his like kind of arm kind of broken in that scene mm -hmm. and it's it is kind of a shame that Android 18 never kind of moved past that though like they that was sort of she she did well after that but like she never became as useful as mm -hmm. she could have been I think in the series especially for someone who could defeat Vegeta early on mm -hmm. so she ended up being they made her kind of into somebody who stays at home and shaves Krillin's hair you know what I mean yeah anyway one of my friends asked it uh what's it like voicing bad guys like uh Dr. Watts from uh Rigby oh, oh Ruby, Ruby. 
Oh my gosh, Ruby is a, such a fun show to work on. I was so happy that they let me work on that because they, uh, I, they're, they're a studio out of Austin and I love those guys so much. And Ruby is one of those shows I just see a lot of people were really liking and I remember it when it was first on. And it's crazy how beautiful that show has become. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, and the cool thing about Ruby is I never know exactly what's going to happen for his character uh, from episode to episode until I come in to record. Mm -hmm. And the last episode, I actually did just record for him recently. I don't know if it's out yet, mm -hmm. um, but I did just record a little bit more for him and I thought he was kind of dead already. So mm -hmm. uh I'm kind of pleased to hear that. Yeah, take care of yourself, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Take yeah. care of yourself, Chris. Peace. Always. Bye. Well, recorders, if there's anything that I want you to take away from this video is that, you know, two years ago, I wanted to interview Chris properly at SAC Anime, but, you know, it's like it was his first time really being a guest there. And it's like with having so many thousands of fans that week, and of course, he wasn't going to stop just for me. And of course, back then, I was just a rookie. Over the years, I started learning more and more about how SAC Anime does their, you know, their thing. And it's like how they really came up with this system that pretty much almost makes it, like, for me, the press person to not get to interview anyone. Like, sure, the PR person has told me they've been trying to update those effing contracts or that. Sometimes the guests, they're just there to sign stuff. I mean, what they're there for, what they pay them to do, but... Oh well, but you know, I'm hoping that shit gets better, which it obviously will. Thank you, recorders, and as always, may the power protect you all.